In this video, we're going to cover the features that CIG worked on last month. This includes Arena Commander, character and weapons, gameplay, missions, and vehicles. And we're going straight into it. In February, the Arena Commander team worked on developing features for an upcoming patch. This team focused on laying the foundation, which includes work on spawning and racing system refactors, as well as bug fixing and quality of life changes. The design team worked on converting a new Stanton location into Arena Commander, which will feature all standard game modes except for Classic Race. The team faced unique challenges with taking PU locations, which will help with future endeavors. The team also worked on an all new atmospheric dogfighting arena, which will be the first atmospheric map in Arena Commander. When it comes to weapons and character, the feature team worked on critical bug fixes for the upcoming patch release, focusing on crashes and player position desyncs. Additionally, they started working on new features related to lockers and outfits. The team is looking at combining the item port and inventory system to store and display large to small items, allowing for outfits to be created as a predefined collection of items that can be equipped or worn in a single action. An example they provided is a coat may appear on the hanger while a small accessory or weapon attachment may go into an inventory drawer. Another inventory feature in progress is the ability for players to perform a reload directly from the backpack or a pocket. This feature will allow the player to perform a slower reload if ammunition is not directly available from the suit, but if ammunition has been stored prior to engaging in combat. The gameplay feature team worked on the tractor beams, which allow ship owners to protect their ship items by clicking them using lock exterior functionality. They also added an interaction to the Grey Cat multi tool that will detach unlocked items from ships to allow for more control over item detaching. The team also expanded on the hollow outline that weapons and feature provided to clear feedback on attaching rules for ship items. The team continued work on the resource network, which is now known as engineering gameplay. They plan to provide a more in-depth look into this feature in an upcoming Inside Star Citizen. Meanwhile, the PUUS team worked on the physicalized cargo refactor, which involved converting the existing cargo renderer prior to actual physical entities on each cargo container. They also converted all commodities, minerals, harvestables to a new resource type requiring refactor of the mining and refining systems to ensure that they work with the new resources. The commodity kiosk was also recreated with building blocks to give greater flexibility with future changes. They also worked with the ship's team to mark up all cargo grids to use the new system. The PU team collaborated with the EUPU gameplay team to ensure that the conversion worked not only with the mining and refining system but also with the new salvage system. After confirming that cargo was working properly with the cargo grids, they worked on the Arena Commander feature team to implement a soft death on ships to preserve all cargo within ships when they enter a disabled state ensuring that interested parties can retrieve it. The Mission Features team made various improvements to Clesher in Star Citizen. They changed the stashes to lootable containers, allowing them to add rare contraband along with typical items. A full stash should now contain an amount of contraband that players can return, giving them a non-violent means to reduce their sentence. Players can also steal minerals from other NPC inmates if they do it deep enough in the mines they can get away with it without getting caught. The team increased the cap on prison sentences to further punish those committing numerous felonies while lighter sentences remain the same. This is really good. The team also prototyped several unannounced missions, one which involves players escorting ships as they quantum travel and land at various locations. Additionally, the team began designing the reputation system after inheriting ownership of the system and prioritizing which work comes first. For vehicles, the vehicle team primarily worked on the transit system for the release of the persistent entity streaming. They encountered various issues that were difficult to identify and resolve as most bugs did not present locally on machines. 
to tackle this issue the team developed a system where they could remotely log the transit system and observe what happens after a bug occurs this helped them identify and resolve various bugs in the ptu the team also added new features to the flight system and refactored some older systems to support one of the ship team's unannounced vehicles. Additionally, the Miss Hall C received a significant amount of low-level tech updates as the team worked through its issues. You already know what to do. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.